Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Lansdale Catholic High School. It's a big-time Philadelphia Catholic League girls basketball matchup, and Eric Gidney, the head coach of Lansdale Catholic, so nice to have us out here tonight, and it's a battle of undefeated teams in the league. This is a big deal. It is a big deal. Um, you can't, uh, can't walk in here and uh, look around and not go, hey, there's something, uh, something meaningful about to go down, so uh, it's going to be a fun. It'll be a good night. You guys are reigning Philadelphia Catholic League champions. You hit it on the big shot last year from Olivia Pichel against this same Archbishop Wood team. You won the state championship. Had to reinvent yourself a little bit with some change in personnel, and what's that been like this year? You know, it's been fun. It's been a good challenge, and it's it's been a challenge for me, the staff, and the team, and, and everyone's really rose to the occasion. And we don't think that we've uh, we're, we're quite where we want to be yet, but it's been fun to watch the growth. And listen, it's a lot of fun to watch growth when you continue to win, too, right? So yeah, it's uh, it's it's been fun to, uh, uh, to to see how they've adapted and pivoted and. Uh, um, you know, we've, we've got a lot more growth to go, but we're looking forward to doing it. Thanks for having us out and good luck. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Appreciate that. Eric Gidney with us. Meg McCullough, our analyst here tonight. Back to you, and then we'll grab Mike McDonald, the head coach of Archbishop Wood. Awesome. Thank you, Bob. We're excited to be here. We have a packed Lansdale Catholic gym and ready for a rematch from last year. We, we just missed Mike there. This is live TV here, Meg. So they are calling out the coaches for an officials meeting. So what we'll do now is we'll take a very quick break and we'll come back on the other side. You're watching Philadelphia Catholic League basketball on Bob Long Sports. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfort Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfort Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dunphy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue a franchise consultant with FranChoice, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. FranChoice is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First we do an introduction, then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information, and we build what's called the model. Once we have that model, we'll share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously, the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above, and the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease, or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time, hmm. but it's also a major project to undertake. 
hundreds of decisions to make, hmm. some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest, no landlords to answer to, and a fiduciary responsibility to work solely in your best interest? Someone who knows the questions to ask, the levers to pull, the pitfalls to avoid. Enter the experts at Gola Corporate Real Estate. They've seen it all over the course of thousands of transactions in dozens of industries. Gola gets it. And what if those experts came with a team? Subject matter experts to manage everything that comes with this process. Space planning and design. Relocation planning and budgeting. Helping you manage your vendors. Construction oversight. All with zero out-of-pocket cost to you. A turnkey experience that adds real value. Value that flows right to your bottom line. Gola gets it. We've been partnering with clients like you for over 40 years, and we know what's important. Solving problems, creating flexibility, protecting and stretching your dollars. Philadelphia-based with a national presence. Get to know Gola. Gola gets it. When your car needs repairs and you can't wait, Meineke can help. With life's crazy schedule between work and family, you'll love Meineke's same-day service. Call today and Meineke will get your car in today. For new brakes, exhaust repairs, or your check engine light comes on, trust Meineke to do the job right. And families have been coming to Meineke for years because Meineke works on any make or model vehicle. Same-day service, value, and trust. Meineke, doing car care right. Be a part of the biggest live events. The must-see matches. He's gone! The game day celebrations. Experience live sports and entertainment the way they're meant to be seen. With Joe Hand Promotions, the global leader of live entertainment for bars, restaurants, and cinemas. Create unforgettable moments that fans won't want to miss. Keep the food and drinks flowing with watch parties that will bring customers in the door and expand dwell time. And watch as these visitors turn into loyal customers with exclusive content relationships with the nation's largest sports and entertainment providers. In over 10,000 bars, restaurants, and cinemas across America and customizable packages for every type of venue. Make your business the place for the next must-see event. Because if fans can't make it to the stadium or arena, your venue is the next best place. What does this win mean? Been with the family for a long time. With our team chemistry, it was bound to happen. Just close, baby! Such a big win from Cross Country Mortgage. Dedicated to getting it done. My name is William Ryan and I'm attending Boston College next year. Good evening once again everybody and welcome to Lansdale Catholic High School. It is the site of the game of the year in the Philadelphia Catholic League on the girls side. It's Archbishop Wood against Lansdale Catholic. Bob Long, Meg McCullough is with us here tonight. Joe Donahue is our man on the camera here this evening. Meg, let's start with a thought from you here because this is a rematch of last year's Philadelphia Catholic League title game. It's two reigning state champions at different classifications and it's two undefeated teams in the league. Doesn't get much bigger. Yeah, looking forward to it. We have a packed house here, Lansdale Catholic. We know there'll be some great basketball ahead of us. Um, we'll see how the teams adapt and adjust and try to limit the runs of each other, get some good stops on defense, and, um, you know, show us what they have. We're looking forward to it. We sure are. Archbishop Wood, they're dressed in black here tonight. The starter is Ava Renninger, a fairly day Dickinson commit. Emily Nels, a verbal to St. Joe's, a commitment there. Alexa Windish, Lauren Greer, Two guys, two girls that have been very, very important coming off the bench in recent years. Now this is their time to lead the charge. And then on the Lansdale Catholic side, 
A lot of changes, as we talked about just a few minutes ago with Eric Gidney, the head coach. No more Gabby Casey, of course, the reigning Philadelphia Catholic League MVP. No more Jada Helm. But the emergence of Grace McDonough, the junior transfer from Souderton, averaging 12 and a half and nine rebounds. She's been unbelievable so far this year. Olivia Bacella is back as a senior. Big shot live as she was termed in her run through postseason play last year. She's the lone senior on this starting lineup. This is Sanaya Littlejohn, number three. She's a junior, so many D1 looks for her because she has the ball on a string, she can dish it. Unlike many in the state of Pennsylvania, and McDonough gets an early touch. It's always important to get that first one off the bat. Strong take inside and a great finish. It is loud in this building. Lansdale Catholic, as they often do, they go to a zone defense, and Archbishop Wood is gonna try to shoot them out of it. Five players on this Viking team that average more than 40%, better than 40% from beyond the three-point arc. Emily Naus, she's a sharp shooter, missed that one, and Little John came up with it, and the crossover to get into the front court. Great rebound there, push, and a, a loose ball, out of bounds. LC ball. That was a heck of a crossover to see on the replay there and ended up creating an offensive look underneath the basket. Here's McDonough. Double team comes on her in the corner. Good hands, and that is last touch by Archbishop Wood. That's number 10, Sophia Topakis. She's a guard that is coming into the lineup, a youngster that's done a great job for Archbishop Wood, replacing some of those that graduated last year. Yeah, that transition coming from those, you know, younger, younger grades and making an impact, playing with the upperclassmen was always something special, and um, it's, it's great to see the younger and even the bench players contributing. McDonough with a touch at the top of the key, back cut there by Bacella. She's going to be guarded at every catch. A tough three. Almost 50% from distance this year for Olivia Bacella. Definitely will have to watch her. She uh... Big block underneath for Lansdale Catholic. Ali Esposito, just a freshman, but she's been unbelievable and she protects the rim like she did right there. Now a good look, that's off the side of the backboard. Some transition here for Wood, back into the 2-3 zone for Lansdale Catholic. We'll see if they can get a stop. Ava Renninger, one of those that's over 40% on the year from three. That one came up a little short. Slow down the pace here for uh, Little John, and we'll see what they, they have to attack this man that, that Wood has. Little John takes that ball screen. Patience now, and Yamola on the back cut. Good look from the elbow. Couldn't quite get it to go, and Renninger is gonna push the pace. Great find, and fouled by McDonough. So running the floor there for Archbishop Wood, Aubrey Mobley, the sophomore. Just gonna say, it's turned into a track meet here. Lots of, lots of offense, uh, some, some baskets that aren't dropping, but I'm sure we'll pick up. Yeah, I beg your pardon. Alexa Windish, number 34, five foot six guard, she was the run the one running the floor there. And Windish, she can shoot it or she can get downhill. In that particular case, she can get out on the break. She was one of the first options off the bench last year for this Archbishop Wood team. And she developed in a big way, Mike McDonald said, over four years. Now has earned her spot as a starter and cuts the deficit in half. Little John is guarded by Ava Renninger. That'll be a matchup, Meg, that I'm looking forward to all night. Maybe the best on ball defender for Archbishop Wood against one of the best guards in the area. That's a good box out there by Emily Naus, and McDonough will want that one back. Yeah, I'm loving the hustle from both these teams. They're up in each other's spaces. They're making it difficult to, to get those offensive looks. Naus for three. 
in rhythm. And you see the difference there, Meg, on that one. Caught it in rhythm, got the ball moving around the perimeter. The first one that she took, I think, was a little forced, a bit of a contest. And there's the difference right there. Yep. Be ready to shoot. Good pass from your teammate. And got a handoff to Bacella here. And a take for the two. And that is a big part of her game. It's developed from last year. Not just a three-point shooter. She can get to the rim. She can create her own shot. And Little John is fouled on the misplay there from Archbishop Wood. Yeah, just to complete the point there, Meg, I mean, Bacella being able to get off the bounce and get to the rim, how much more lethal now does that make the three? Because you have to re respect the bounce as well. Of course, of course. And as a player, that shot's it's hard to develop, that floater, and to have it at her her skill set in her skill set is is nice. By the way, Meg McCullough knows of which she speaks. My partner here tonight, University of Penn player, graduated in 2014, and now runs the women's basketball podcast. By the way, that everybody should go listen to. Oh, it was good take there uh, by Lansdale Catholic. They're up six four. Let's see if Wood can come back. Lansdale Catholic, that zone is so tough when it starts to collapse on you. you gotta make sure you're spaced out well, the ball's moving, and you're cutting with purpose. See some good ball moving here to the left. Drive attack, some and swinging. Now, how quickly can they swing it? They return it to the corner. And Little John came up with the rebound. Has to be her, you know, third or fourth rebound. Just a really good job crashing the boards and attacking. Renninger, speaking of third or fourth rebound, at just 5'5", five five, she's one of the leading rebounders on this team. There's a steal from Little John. No numbers. Doesn't matter to Little John. It's blocked by Renninger. And that should be Archbishop Wood basketball. Well done by Ava Renninger. Michaela. Finnegan checking in, number 20 on, on Wood, has uh, had a great start as a freshman, and we'll see what she can do here in this, this big showcase. It really is the story with both of these teams that are at the top of the Philadelphia Catholic League, Meg, and they are a lot of times driven by underclassmen, or certainly they're playing key supporting roles. Neither of these teams are going anywhere. This is going to be a big game every time it cycles around on the calendar for years to come. Yep, those high school matchups, swing over. Good ball movement by Lansdale Catholic, attack, and a foul. And speaking of freshmen, Ali Esposito, the freshman for Lansdale Catholic, she picks up the personal foul on the dribble drive. Alexa Windish, the 5'6 guard, will shoot two at the line. She's one of two from the stripe here tonight. Takes that first one, see if she can convert the second. The game last year, Meg, in the Palestra was a game of runs, and Lansdale Catholic got up big early, and Archbishop Wood made some halftime adjustments. They trailed by eight at the half, ended up with a multi-possession lead. Lansdale Catholic cut it back to a tie and got the big shot at the end. Great look from Sanaya Littlejohn. Ali Esposito with nobody down low at the block. Yeah, speaking of runs, so far each team has been able to hit back here. We have number four from Wood, uh, Avery Redinger with a turnaround jumper. And Mike McDonald said that's the engine that runs the offense. And really it's been that way for a couple of years. When Ali Fleming went down last year, giveaway there by the freshman Ali Esposito looking for McDonough. When Fleming went down last year, a lot of people wrote this team off. It was the leading scorer for Archbishop Wood Fleming. But first off, Fleming stayed very involved, kind of a coach on the bench. But Renninger stepped up, the other five stepped up, the other four in the starting lineup and a couple of the key reserves. And a jump ball, guess who? Ava Renninger mixing it up with Sanaya Littlejohn. That's been our matchup to watch here tonight, and it's delivered. Yeah, great energy and a, you know, aggression there on that rebound, getting an extra possession for the Wood team. 
all those little ones matter and see if they can convert here. And so now, Fleming, of course, Kara Meredith, Delaney Finnegan, and Deja Evans no longer with the club. This is a different looking team, but yet again, Mike McDonald and this program have retooled with some younger players that are playing key minutes. A minute and four seconds to play in what's been an excellent first quarter thus far. Bacella 0 for 1 from beyond the arc. She has the runner in the lane. Little John will try it from deep. And that's a great box out by the Vikings of Archbishop Wood. Attack. Again, they push. Almost got it off the window. And Little John will pull it up. A quick point there, Meg. As McDonough gets to the hoop and is blocked by Emily Nels. You can see they're face guarding uh, Bacella here and it's making it a little more difficult on, on offense for Wood. Sorry, for, uh, for Lionsdale Catholic. Good take there by Wood, take the lead 10 to eight. That's an offhand layup by Nouse. They had a chance to hold for one and gosh, as has become customary in this rivalry, nobody's holding for one. <laughs> 15 seconds last year. There's the runner by Emily Nouse. She hit an early three, which got her going. She's got the last four of the quarter, and Archbishop Wood ends on a mini spurt to lead by four. Always helps going into that quarter with some, uh, some, some energy, some spirit, but we'll, I'm sure we'll see Lansdale Catholic bounce back as we, we saw last year in, in their games this year. 13-1, and one, really great start. Um, and same for Wood, coming off, uh, you know, 11 and five, some great wins against O'Hara and Carroll, and uh, looking forward to continuing it here. So Meg, we teased it a little bit, your background in basketball, but tell us a little bit about your history and the game and the community, what, certainly what brings you here tonight, and uh, why, why the love for high school basketball? Yeah, of course. Um, well, basketball has always been a part of of my life growing up, older brothers, I was always playing, played through high school, Notre Dame, and you know, had the opportunity, Academy of Notre Dame in the Interact, and had the opportunity to, to continue on at Penn. Uh, but we would play all these, you know, Catholic League schools out, out season, and um, it was just great experience, great reps, great atmospheres, as we can see here. Um, and just, you know, being a part of it, still helping these girls um, improve both on and off the court has been something special I've, I've kept with me through the years, so. It's a special uh, sport, and we're happy for all those listeners that are supporting. Absolutely, and the folks that couldn't be here tonight, this is a wonderfully quaint and tight venue that only was going to seat so many. And they knew early on that this game was going to sell out. We're thrilled that we're here to bring it to those that could not, whether be here because of geographic or other reasons or just didn't get to the door in time before it sold out. Yeah, people on the stage watching. <laughs> That's right. Little John again, one-on-one -on -one against Renninger. McDonough sets the ball screen. Here's Nadia Yamola, and it's tight over in that corner, so Little John will take it back to the logo. She has great patience and poise, you know, as a point guard, that handle, and knowing when to attack uh, right about now. Great shot from Little John, and they're creeping back in, 12-10. And Meg, that's a developing part of her game. To the extent that she can hit the mid-range shot with consistency, that's going to be a challenge for anyone at any level that wants to try to guard her. Renninger, that's a deep three. Couldn't quite hit it, and a solid checkout down below there by the freshman Esposito. Fouled in the act of shooting. Renninger picks up the personal. And little John can tie it here with 6.50 to play in the second quarter. And Bob, you can see those long outlets. It's something, you know, as a, as a player you focus on, how quickly can you get out in the, fo uh, the court, force those um, easy baskets, easy layups. Got little John here shooting too. See if she can ch uh, catch the second at the charity stripe. We talked with both coaches about this rivalry and where it's going in, in the future. And really, it wasn't a rivalry, even prior to last year. 
in, in 2022, Lansdale Catholic made a surprise run, I would say, through the 4A state playoffs and got all the way to the final where they were beaten by this Archbishop Wood team. Renninger, no one picked her up. Just a little short. There's an offensive carom for the Vikings and in rhythm three for Emily Naus. Extra rebounds there from, uh, from Lauren Greer, 31. Great hustle. Oh, and a put back from McDonough. Boy, that is skill with a little fadeaway. I don't know that she needed the fadeaway there, Meg, but skillful nonetheless Looks to put pretty. that through. <laughs> You're 6'2", you know, that's the other thing is, hey, <laughs> who's going to guard this going straight up? McDonough. That's a great look again for Emily Naus, and it started with McDonough jumping at the ball shooter, some help coming off the edge, a great kick to the wing. And so the rivalry as Bacella steps back. That's a tough shot. Who's going to get to it first? Archbishop Wood does. Good find up the floor and a bit too strong. Yamola runs the floor defensively for Lansdale Catholic. But again, that, that rivalry started in the 2022 final. Archbishop Wood was more ready for the moment. It was Lansdale Catholic's first time there. They met again, of course, in the regular season, and Lansdale Catholic beat Archbishop Wood in the 2023 Catholic League regular season for the first time ever. That's Little John, count it, and one. And then, of course, they met in that epic matchup, Meg, at the Palestra in the Philadelphia Catholic League final. One more look, find the body of the defender. Good body control by Little John. And so the first two times in the program's history the Lansdale Catholic beat Archbishop Wooden. So the question is, will the rivalry continue? I think as long as these two men are roving the sidelines, Mike McDonald and Eric Gidney, I think this game will mean something. Particularly two schools, you know, one's just into Bucks County, Archbishop Wood, the other's in the heart of Montgomery County. A couple of miles as the crow flies. Emily now stays hot. It's been her night. Yeah, it's, it's some great basketball out here today. Clearly some, some strong coaches that have are working with the girls on and off season, and we'll see if we can have uh, Lansdale Catholic get a stop here. Control that run. Little John Renninger. Good defense, good pressure by Wood. Pacella defended one on one. Has not had a clean look all night. Good look, and that's well long from Esposito. Good box out by Emily Naus. Sanaya Littlejohn, what a play. How athletic is that? Body control. Hello. That's a high-end Division I play. Oh, Emily Naus, you got to guard her when she walks in the door to the gym. That was a deep one. Both teams. Little John to answer. That's maybe not quite her look. Renninger. Steps into one, it's a good look, but a long two. And Lansdale Catholic is thinking, mercifully, somebody other than Emily Naus taking a shot from beyond the arc. That's true, I mean, you can see Emily Naus is getting hot here, but uh, Lansdale Catholic has done a really good job continuing to score on offense. We'll see if they get something here. We talked about the D1 interest for Sanaya Littlejohn. Her and Grace McDonough have about a total of 55 or so schools combined that are interested in them. A lot of the same schools in Littlejohn lost the footing and traveled with it. A lot of the same schools are looking at both of them. Makes Eric Gidney's job a little bit easier, but also <laughs> I think Meg makes the college recruiter's job a little bit easier. Hey, I'll take one trip to Montgomery County and I'll get a point guard and a, and a forward that already have chemistry. That's right. <laughs> That's a good trip to the office. A good duo. And that one 
Overthrown, now not on the same page with number 20, Michaela Finnegan. That's what that collapsing zone can do to you. Yep, they extend it there a bit more just to guard the three and threw, uh, threw Wood off their game. You can see uh, Bacella being guarded tight here. Hard for her to get off an easy shot, but attack. Off the ball screen, there's McDonough with an offensive rebound. Couldn't finish with the left hand. There she is, each one further than the last. Emily Naus. She hit an enormous three right at the end of the third quarter of the game at the Palestra last yep. year. That pushed Archbishop Wood into the lead and gave them some momentum in the fourth quarter. Now a whistle on the floor. And there One was a point at the uh, Wood bench, Meg. That might have been a bench warning. Beg your pardon. No, no worries. I, I agree, Bob. Just going to say, many big threes in that game, and you're right, that third quarter, uh, now three was, was big, just like she's hitting here. But Lansdale Catholic did not give up last year. I can see him, see if they get something here on offense. Good cut by Bacella. The double comes late. Esposito, great look inside. They got it up quickly. Well done. That's the sophomore, Aubrey Mobley. Windish carves her way into the lane. How do you leave her open? Emily Naus. That's what a paint touch does for you there, though, Meg. Collapse that zone. Yep, driving kick. Get the defense off. Off feed and uh, kick it out to the shooter. That's hot right now. Good answer from Sanaya Littlejohn. Yep, they have a minute, minute 18 to cut this lead, and we'll see if they can get a stop here. It's the most important thing they need to focus on. A stop and a score is what we say. <laughs> One now, at a time. A good look from three. But, as Lansdale Catholic would say, it's somebody else taking it. Too strong, and Archbishop Wood makes it one and done. Now, now, Scott into the lane. It's her night. <laughs> 10 point lead for Archbishop Wood. Ties their largest of the night. Final stages of the second quarter, and this game has flown by. Sure has, Bob, lots of Lots of energy on both sides, but Wood at this point is getting some steals and making some shots. Aubrey Mobley had no chance but to foul number 10, Sophia Topakis. You'll see on this replay here, it started that Archbishop Wood really didn't have any numbers, but Topakis beat Lansdale Catholic down the floor. She did, got her shoulder in there and enough to get the foul called. One for one. Slight, slightly off to the right, or uh, right on that one. See if Lansdale Catholic can respond. 15 seconds. See if you can create some sort of down screen to get Bacella an open look here. Six seconds to play. Sanaya Littlejohn with two, with one. And Archbishop Wood defends to perfection. On that final offensive sequence for Lansdale Catholic, they lead by 11 points here at the break. And Meg, we can talk about and will talk about Emily Naus and her incredible prowess from beyond the arc. But one thing that always stands out to me about Mike McDonald and his teams is their defensive acumen, their intensity on the defensive side of the ball and how there really are no easy looks for Lansdale Catholic right now. Yeah, they're doing a great job. We all know, you know, defense wins games and it's great when you have the offense, but right now they're partnering the two together and, and getting stops and that's most important. So I think uh, Lansdale Catholic will take it in the locker room, see how they can definitely stop Naus and, and get a run going in the, in the second half. 
What a game we have here tonight. Glad everybody's here with us. Stand by and we'll be back in just a few minutes for the second half here on Bob Long Sports. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease. Or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time, hmm. but it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make, hmm. some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest, no landlords to answer to, and a fiduciary responsibility to work solely in your best interest. Someone who knows the questions to ask, the levers to pull, the pitfalls to avoid. Enter the experts at Gola Corporate Real Estate. They've seen it all over the course of thousands of transactions in dozens of industries. Gola gets it. And what if those experts came with a team? Subject matter experts to manage everything that comes with this process. Space planning and design, relocation planning and budgeting, Helping you manage your vendors, construction oversight, all with zero out-of-pocket cost to you. A turnkey experience that adds real value, value that flows right to your bottom line. Gola gets it. We've been partnering with clients like you for over 40 years, and we know what's important. Solving problems, creating flexibility, protecting and stretching your dollars. Philadelphia-based with a national presence. Get to know Gola. Gola gets it. When your car needs repairs and you can't wait, Meineke can help. With life's crazy schedule between work and family, you'll love Meineke's same-day service. Call today and Meineke will get your car in today. For new brakes, exhaust repairs, or your check engine light comes on, trust Meineke to do the job right. And families have been coming to Meineke for years because Meineke works on any make or model vehicle. Same-day service, value, and trust. Meineke, doing car care right. Be a part of the biggest live events. The must-see matches. He's gone! The game day celebrations. Experience live sports and entertainment the way they're meant to be seen. With Joe Hand Promotions, the global leader of live entertainment 
for bars, restaurants, and cinemas. Create unforgettable moments that fans won't want to miss. Keep the food and drinks flowing with watch parties that will bring customers in the door and expand dwell time. And watch as these visitors turn into loyal customers with exclusive content relationships with the nation's largest sports and entertainment providers. In over 10,000 bars, restaurants, and cinemas across America, and customizable packages for every type of venue. Make your business the place for the next must-see event. Because if fans can't make it to the stadium or arena, your venue is the next best place. What does this win mean? Been with the family for a long time. With our team chemistry, it was bound to happen. Just close, baby! <laughs> Such a big win from Cross Country Mortgage. Dedicated to getting it done. My name is William Ryan and I'm attending Boston College next year. LaSalle obviously academically is, is so strong. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dunphy difference. You'll be glad you did. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. Yeah. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease. Or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time, hmm. but it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make, hmm. some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest? Welcome back, everybody, and thanks for joining us here tonight on Bob Long Sports. Philadelphia Catholic League girls basketball. One ask from you here tonight, like the video and subscribe to the channel. We'll have Philadelphia Catholic League basketball on the boys and the girls side throughout the year. Of course, when football time comes around, we'll do that, some spring sports. So if you like high school basketball, and why wouldn't you? And I'm sure you do if you're here now. Give us a follow on YouTube and like the video. Third quarter underway and Archbishop Wood gives it away. Some miscommunication there. Lansdale Catholic though, they're gonna get the basketball now down 11. 
This is a team that lost 35 points per contest and Gabby Casey and Jada Helm to graduation. 21 rebounds amongst those two. A couple of players playing at the next level. But they got a group of players that they think can do it this year. This is one of them, Grace McDonough. And that was Mike McDonald's number one concern is how are they gonna guard Grace McDonough down low. That's Emily Nows with the ball at the top of the key. She had 27 points in the first half. Six from behind the arc and she will shoot two at the line. Not only, Meg, did she do such a great job offensively, but when they've gone man, which is almost exclusively, it's been her role to guard the larger and taller Grace McDonough down low. A really great first half for this junior, and we'll see if she can hit these two. First one is good. It'll be important for Lansdale Catholic to get stops here. Naus, two of two. 29 of the 35 points for Archbishop Wood. By the way, big ups to Andrew Robinson, who covers just about everything here in Philadelphia with City of Basketball Love for giving us that stat. And now they're getting the two bigs involved, Meg. Esposito on the dish from McDonough. Yeah, that was a great high-low. Got the ball in the middle and able to open, find an opening down below. You can see some intensity here on the defensive side. Naus, tough pass through traffic, and McDonough came up with it. Now Little John pulls it back for Nadia Yamola. Have to see if we can get something here from uh, Bacella. She set the record with 10 threes in a game against Ryan a few weeks ago. Pretty impressive. That's a really good look for McDonough. Yeah, she's had games as Bacella with seven threes, eight threes, and 10 threes. Unbelievable, that's a great look. Archbishop Wood gets the look they want, but one and done there as Windish's shot comes up short. Yamola, give it back to her in rhythm, and that was short. Didn't quite get the feet set as she let that one go. So the five out there for Lansdale Catholic, Sanaya Little John, Nadia Yamola, Olivia Bocella, Annie Esposito, and then Grace McDonough. Right, beg your pardon, Ali Esposito, the freshman who's been unbelievable so far this year. So is she, Ava Renninger. Big three, not just from uh, Emily Naus, but from another strong shooter. We'll see if uh, Lansdale Catholic, oh, and a steal by, let's see who we have, 31. Sorry, I couldn't see the number there. Lauren Greer, great. And Renninger again, that's a long two, at least for now. The officials are gonna talk about that very point. Now they're gonna give her a three. So Ava Renninger has now hit two straight threes and you mentioned the steal and assist from Lauren Greer. Greer played JV each of the last three seasons for this program. She stuck it out and now she's starting and has some colleges looking at her. And in an environment where a lot of people do transfer for the next great opportunity, she stuck it out recognizing the type of program that she was growing within and knew that it would be Lauren Greer time her senior year. What a great job by her to, to do that and now reaping those rewards, Meg. Yeah, always a great story. Those, all that extra hard work pays off, getting reps wherever it may be, and then having a strong, strong last year. McDonough all over the offensive glass. Allie Esposito resets for Little John, and that feed was just to that inside shoulder rather than the outside shoulder, and McDonough had trouble adjusting. One more look. I think if you keep it off the outside shoulder there, she turns all in one motion, keeps the ball high, and finishes with the left hand. Yep, just the placement there. 
Great idea from, uh, from, from Little, Little John. John, yep. There's an open three. That one is no good. And Bacella tracks it down in the corner. And a foul is called against Archbishop Wood. Emma Yogis. One more look here, and I think the foul was first because on the back end, maybe a little chicken wing there from Olivia Bacella, but. Good pressure to see that she's in the corner and tries to get a quick turnover. Bacella here, drives, good take for two. Oh yeah, and that's what you want from your senior there. They're gonna run you off the three-point line. Great, sounds good. I can get to the rim with the best of them. She started as a point guard her freshman year. That's well short. Renninger, she'll get a better look by finding her teammate inside. Beautiful. And the finish inside by Lauren Greer. But again on Bacelli, who has the ball now. She started as a point guard. Then she thought this is her better position. A shooting guard getting into it, knocking it down. Tania Littlejohn coming into the program as a youngster and being able to run the point allows her to go off to two guard Meg and things like that can happen. She's been unbelievable the yep. last couple of years. Yeah, that combo is always nice. Uh, we had a screen there and a, a nice three from Bacella. Let's see if she can get something moving here and down, down 12 at this point. Three minutes to go. So for as well as Emily Nouse has shot the ball, and it's been unbelievable. Six threes. All of a sudden, yeah, 12 point game. It's a lot to come back from, but you have the sharp shooting Pacelli. You got Little John that can get to the rim. Ali Esposito and Grace McDonough down low. A couple of big stops for this Lansdale Catholic team, and you can be looking at a whole new ball game. Yeah, especially at this high school level. These these point differences are not much when you know you, you have this great talent and a team can go on a run and feel good and make some shots and all of a sudden it's a six point game. So we'll we'll see what happens here in this showdown of two great teams from the final last year. By the way, I think we can say this. I don't know if it's any major secret, but we'll unveil it anyway. I'm thrilled to be back broadcasting the Philadelphia Catholic League Finals this year from the Plus. We're so excited to do it, but I'm even more excited that Meg McCullough is going to be my partner for the girls game. And so thrilled that you can be here tonight calling this one. Who knows? Is it a preview? There are some other teams, O'Hara, Carroll, Newman, Garetti that might have something to say about that, and it's going to be unbelievable as we get to February. They waved this off. What's the call? Two officials. They have the foul against Lansdale Catholic. They wave off the bucket. This is the tail end of it. We'll see. On the ground, balls in play. And again. Emily Naus getting to the rim. She draws two fouls on successive possessions. This time, Meg, no question in the act. Yep, she wanted that first one and got the ball back and just took it right at them. Let's see if she can convert here. As you were saying, Bob, that it's a special, special opportunity for these girls to play against great competition in a in the Philadelphia area and then make their way to the Palestra. And I'm, I no doubt these teams will be competing with, uh, with whoever's up at, in that level. And right now, both undefeated. We'll, we'll see how it falls today. Maybe the wildest stat to show how good Wood has been for so long, even before Mike McDonald arrived years ago. They have been to the Palestra, not to the semifinals, but to the final. In 14 of the last 17 years, great defense by Lansdale Catholic Sanaya Littlejohn. That is an impressive stat. <laughs> Program with lots of great history and something Lansdale Catholic is starting with their first one last year. And an off ball, dead ball foul called against Archbishop Wood. It'll go the other way. 
See if Little John can get something going here. McDonough to Bacella. And Alexa Windish. She's the one that is going to guard the opposing team's best player that's under six foot. And that's Bacella. And that's a five second call. So I, Meg, I've never liked this call. And the officials are adjudicating it exactly the way the National Federation of High Schools wants them to adjudicate it. They're doing it right. I just don't like that. I understand that she didn't get off the outside hip of the defender, but she advanced the ball a good five feet there. Yep. And the count didn't stop. It's a tough one. I, I mean, the credit to the defender being able to keep her in front and apply that pressure. But again, I think she broke the, the plane there and made her... Count it and one for Ava Renninger. She's hit a couple from deep. This time she gets to the hoop off the bounce. One more look. Just kind of always had that defender beat by a half step. Didn't give up the advantage. That's a quality finish in traffic. It is. Running her here in the second half, having two big threes and then this few other takes, really strong performance, and see if Lansdale Catholic can get something on offense. Great look inside, and she got it up quickly, plus the foul. Lauren Greer picked it up, and Lansdale Catholic needed that one, Meg. It was their largest deficit of the night at 17. Chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. And a chance for Lansdale Catholic on the stoppage to go full court pressure. The problem is on both sides of the floor you have unbelievable ball handlers. Renegar is fouled by number 24, Aubrey Mobley. Mobley just had a great finish and won with the, with the uh, foul shot and he's guarding Renegar here. Yeah, Mobley is a captain as a sophomore on a team that has a senior and a couple of juniors and girls that have played at the highest level here going through to the state final, Philadelphia Catholic League final. Says a lot about Mobley who was termed as a glue girl. She'll guard one to four depending upon what's necessary. And that time a little check on Renninger but making her presence known. Lansdale Catholic looking to clear it out. And Emily Naus called for the foul. She knew it as she tried to go through the player to get to that basketball. Great post up by Grace McDonough and to be able to get her the ball inside to trigger that foul. And again, saw we had just a tiny bit of uh, fuzziness there. Here is Olivia Bacella. Great offensive rebound there, Ali Esposito. That one towards the sideline kept in, but for Emily Naus. But again, it is a packed gym, and we got the stands bumping up and down, so we'll recalibrate that camera as soon as we can. It's the largest lead, though, for Archbishop Wood at 18 points. Again, Renninger, again getting to the hoop, and again with that power right-hand dribble. Between Naus and Renninger, it's some great basketball. And oh, inside for McDonough. They wave off the foul. So I think that's the 15th foul, and now we get that confirmation. By the way, just so we do know, because by the time of day, 748, what you see on the scoreboard of two on the period symbol would, would seem correct or potentially correct. This is third quarter action here on Bob Long Sports. And it was like a, what, 22 minute, 23 minute first half. They were running up and down the floor, not many stoppages. A few more here in the third quarter, but Lansdale Catholic, they have their work cut out for them. Down 16 with 22 seconds left in the third quarter. See if they can hold here, get a stop, 16 seconds. This will be good, big momentum going into the half. 
Great look. Open three given up so that she can drive to the hoop. Good hands inside by the freshman, Ali Esposito. Down to the two, second mark, puts it up. Good if it goes. They got the stop, did Lansdale Catholic. They got a decent look, but it is a 16 point lead for Archbishop Wood headed to the fourth quarter. In large part paced by 29 points from Emily Nows, 27 of which came in the first half. One more ask to the folks watching the game here tonight. Like the video and give us a follow on YouTube. We, we're fortunate to be able to get out and broadcast a lot of games. and We do it because there's demand for it and folks enjoy following the athletic exploits of these wonderful athletes across the Philadelphia Catholic League. So follow us for more here on Bob Long Sports. What has caught your eye this year, Meg, across the high school basketball scene? That can be girls, boys. That could be high schoolers playing at the college level. What, what's caught your eye? Yeah, I think it's, it's really fun to be able to watch these talented high school players uh, take that next step to the college level. It's a, it's a fast game. It's a, a new environment for them. And you can see here even Gabby Casey with the St. Joe's University team. They're off to a great start, won the Big Five. Um, playing amazing and, and great basketball in the A-10, and Gabby Case is a big part of that. Coming on, um, you know, as a as a guard, and um, that transition from high school to college is, is super important, and she did a great job. So it'll be fun to see how these girls do that are out on the court now when they make the when they decide to make that step to, to play at the next level. That's right. Yeah, you talk about Casey, and you know, we mentioned that Emily Nouse, right, the junior, verbally committed to St. Joe's. This is now full head of steam, and they will reset that offense, then hit the gas switch, and it's an excellent look. Can't argue with it. Now for Lansdale Catholic. Got to get some good looks. Ava Renninger meets her at the summit, a big block. They switched things up, did Lansdale Catholic. Out of the zone. Renninger is blocked by Grace McDonough, averaging four per contest. And by the way, Zanaya Littlejohn, the defender on Emily Nouse, the game's leading scorer. A little bit of length at that guard position, but super quick. Windish guards Olivia Bacella, largely bottled up here tonight. Archbishop Wood, they did this last year to Maddie Weber, now playing at Villanova in the state final. That was the team out west that Weber played for. And I don't think they were ready for the defensive prowess of Archbishop Wood. More of the same, different pieces, Meg, but the commitment to the defensive end remains the same in Warminster. Yeah, agreed, and I know we talked about it earlier, but that's where it starts, and all along Wood is pressured uh, Lansdale Catholic and got them out of their game. Got good, one good for uh, Bacella. See if she can knock down the second. And what was 18 at one point is now 13. Is now 12 with an eternity to go. Can Lansdale Catholic turn up the screws defensively and coerce some turnovers to bring them back into the contest? Archbishop Wood is running their sets, spacing the floor well. Looking for a back cutter. Yeah, at this level, it's, you know, they can run their normal offense and it takes time off the clock. So Lansdale Catholic's going to have to do something, step up and cause that turnover. Again, some of those elements of the Princeton style offense where you're flashing and cutting with a back screen. Right there on spot, backdoor cuts. And that one was tipped. What a job by Sophia Tapakis to get the hand on it. Fortunate for Archbishop Wood that it hit the backboard. And now they can put it in park if they so choose. Up 12 with five and a half to go. Got the switch to Little John. And 
they're going to feed it inside. And that was a pass into a lot of traffic. Certainly understand what Greer was looking to do there. But it creates the opportunity in transition. So now your little John cuts it to 10. That's what Lansdale Catholic in at two stops. And that time they did get a score, so. Timeout Mike McDonald. And that's an experienced coach there. Seeing things start to turn, still the two possess or the two double digit lead. Let's get it under control, he says, before it starts to go the wrong direction. Yeah, and the both teams have been in these positions all year with some playing against tough competition, close games, and um, you know, Wood just has to has to be patient and control the ball. Well, with much purpose, Archbishop Wood scheduled an incredibly difficult out-of-conference schedule this year, including teams such as McDonough. McDonough has a player going to Maryland and Stanford. Panther Creek has a commit going to Memphis next year. Friends Central playing at a high level. West Town may be playing at the highest level at this uh, in the girls' game right now in Philadelphia. And in terms of the max prep strength of schedule across all of Pennsylvania, West Town had the, the top rated schedule, I get that. It's like a, it's effectively a national schedule that West Town is playing. And Archbishop Wood right behind with a lot of distance between two and three, the second hardest schedule in Pennsylvania this year. So they're ready for these moments and they feel like they've played competition that would fare well and Puts perhaps, them in. perhaps even be difficult for a Catholic League you know, champion to beat. And so they feel as if they're ready to go in the regular season here. Yep, they've been put in those uh, positions before, but here we are tr struggling to get the ball in. Another timeout for Wood. Yep, absolutely. Lansdale Catholic ratchets up the screws. Lansdale Catholic, they were perfect, Meg, going into just this past weekend, and they lost to a familiar foe, a foe you know very well, Notre Dame. Yes, I did see that. Uh, it's been fun to go back to the academy and watch some some of their games. They're playing strong as well, but um, you know, 13 and one is is pretty darn good coming into this game. So, of course, Notre Dame, your alma mater. Yes. In the interact, they had a game today against Penn Charter. It was a, a rematch. I'm not sure how that went down, but as always, maybe we'll get some Bob Long on the uh, interact hey, <laughs> one day. Tell you what. That would be fun. There's a high level of basketball being played in the Interact. There is no doubt about that. Renninger, strong catch. Opens up the three, Windish. Doing it on, on both an offense and defense there. Guarding Bacella and hitting the three, pretty impressive. That's a big three to stop the bleeding. They lead again by 13. And that back cut was ambitious. The pass was beyond the outstretched arms of Olivia Bacella, and Renninger puts it in park. Olivia Bacella picks up the personal foul. Just the first team foul against Lansdale Catholic here in the fourth quarter. And again, for those of you relatively new, at least to the 2023-2024 high school basketball season, the model has changed in terms of how they account for fouls and the bonus to return to the NBA model. Great back cut. And Alexa Windish on the assist from Emily Naus. Great execution out of that half court, or excuse me, out of the sideline and half court. Uh, let's see if Lansdale Catholic can get something going here. Down 15 with four minutes to go. Dribble drive, Mobley is fouled, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. Another look at the tail end of that one as she got knocked. Back in for Archbishop Wood, Sophia Tapakis. Tapakis, an interesting story. A really talented midfield in soccer and may be her sport when it comes down to it, but Mike McDonald said that he feels as if she takes a lot of her qualities from the soccer field 
onto the basketball floor. Great ball handler, very creative, the way a lot of soccer players are and need to be, and she has been an excellent option for this team. The last, if you will, the fifth starter, Michaela Finnegan, her and her split a lot of time with Finnegan being the first off the bench. And Finnegan, by the way, the sister of Delaney Finnegan, who was 5'10", long, certainly had a great offensive game, but the thing that stuck out to her more than anything for me was she was one of the best on-ball defenders I've, I've ever seen at the high school level. And yes, the length helped, but the discipline, the footwork was a big part of it. Michaela, a lot of the same. She's had five games in double digits, so she's become an offensive threat, but also can really defend and uh, works well within this system. The one thing that Mike did say, though, Meg, is she's 5'6". Not sure if she's getting to 5'10 the way her sister did. Yep, yeah, no. It's all right with, with her size. She's still scrappy and can control the ball. That's right. Uh, point guard, shooting guard, which, whatever she chooses as a freshman, she is, she's young and has a lot of great talents. Ava Renninger does a great job to get into the set. And with 3.42 to go, they're going to force Lansdale Catholic to take some chances. Windish gives up the open three. She just hit one. So it shows you exactly where Archbishop Wood's head is. Shorten this basketball game. Keep the ball in the hands of maybe the best guard in the league in Ava Renninger. See if she can draw a five-second call back to... That's what we right. were talking about earlier, it's turn the ball over and get something going on offense. Now a double, picked up the dribble in a tough spot and Mike McDonald calls timeout. And that's a great timeout coming from that Archbishop Wood bench. We talk about it all the time, Meg, there's no shot clock here at the high school level, but that doesn't mean that it's easy to dribble the ball for two minutes or a minute and a half against a talented defense. So. If that is your goal, you can leverage timeouts to get there. Listen, if you're on the losing side, you need to keep your timeouts because the clock doesn't stop on made baskets inside one minute the way it does at every other level of basketball. So you have to be able to stop the clock. If you're leading like this, you can use your timeouts to, hey, you want to hold it for a minute and a half? Great. Dribble it out for 45, and when you get in a tough position, take your timeout. Now you're reset and a new effectively internal shot clock with Archbishop Wood to work with. Yep, and an opportunity here to defend and deny, get that steal. Lansdell Catholic is gonna have to pick up, get scrappy. We got a foul there from Bacella. And just the second team foul, so with 3.04 to go, they have to start thinking about sending Archbishop Wood to the foul line. Still two more fouls to give for the Crusaders of Lansdale Catholic. Got Little John on Mouse. Kicks the ball out. And Little John fouls wow. Emily Nouse. One more foul to give. And Bacella fouled Ava Renninger. Fourth team foul against Lansdale Catholic. Wood's doing a good job spacing here. We need Lansdale Catholic to get up and deny, try to cause a turnover. Some of the Archbishop Wood boys basketball team here tonight to support the girls. Just saw Jaleel Batea walk by us here. It's always been that way at Archbishop Wood. And it is one of those schools where both programs have been incredibly successful over a long period of time. The commitment from the athletic department, the commitment from the student body, leads to a desire to want to go to school there, go play for these coaches. And the support of each program. Hey, a couple years ago, both of them were playing in the state final in Hershey. That was just two years ago. It's special for those those players and those students that support. Two for uh, Lauren Greer. Lansdale Catholic needs to get something going here on offense. Down 18 with 2.46 to go. 
And I've been impressed with Greer's game. We talked a little bit about it, Meg, but so cerebral as McDonough will shoot two. Greer, one of the top five in her class academically. Mike McDonald called her brilliant, and I think you see that when she's defending on ball. And she's got great footwork, but has a great understanding of where the opposition is looking to get to and how she can get in the way in legal guarding position. McDonough missed the first. Yeah, that's a whole other element of the game, not just the skill, not the, just the speed, but that basketball IQ is so important and continuing to build that through your high school years. Where to be, where's the next pass going, you know, all those important things. Time out on the floor, 2.35 to play here in the fourth quarter. Bob Long and Megan McCullough on the broadcast with Joe Donahue helping us on the camera, doing a great job. And it's not an easy camera job today, is it, Meg, with the stand shaking and tight confines? We wouldn't want it any other way. That's true. We've, everyone came out to see this game, and it's sure been a good one. It has. It absolutely has. And you just never know if we don't see this one again in the playoffs, whether that's in the semifinal or potentially back at the Palestra again. And after this, you know, two tough games for both teams. Uh, Wood has Newman Goretti on Friday and Lansdale Catholic with Carroll. So Wood just was able to uh, to beat Archbishop Carroll at, with a strong fourth quarter this past weekend. But I think Lansdale Catholic will definitely give them a run and we'll see what, who comes out on top in that next game. And if they can, if Archbishop Wood can win this game here tonight, they'll go into that next game against Newman Goretti undefeated but also through the gauntlet of Cardinal O'Hara Archbishop Carroll and now Lansdale Catholic you could be looking at the one seed just about locked up by 8.30 Friday night now one of our very favorite coaches in the league Andrea Peterson is watching this probably listening right now thinking I don't think so, Bob. I don't, I don't think that's the way it's going to go. And She's an unbelievable coach, a great competitor, great broadcaster, by the way. Really enjoyed having her on the, state, the uh, Catholic League final this year, but I don't think she wants any part of sitting next to me at the Plesture. She wants to be sitting across the way on one of the benches. Of course, of course. Emily Naus, largely bottled up because Lansdale Catholic has committed so many resources to Naus, who hit six threes in the first quarter, but Naus has deferred. There's Olivia Pacella with a step back triple. It's a 13 point game and a whistle. And that was a deep one, close to college range. It sure very, was. A very pretty shot. Timeout, and Mike McDonald is thinking that. Eric Gidney didn't get that time out off in time, but it was granted to him with two minutes and 13 seconds to play. Good time to announce something else, folks. Some more fun going on at Bob Long Sports. So this is not the only big game we're picking up this week. We are headed to Holy Family University on Sunday at 2.30 p.m. If this is the game of the year on the girls' side, Roman Catholic hosting Newman Coretti on the boys' side is the game of the year in that realm. And we will be there to broadcast the contest. We're excited to do it. Thanks to Brian Haas for reaching out to us. We're also going to be at Roman Catholic on Friday. That's at Broad and Vine, by the way, when LaSalle High School comes to town to take on the Kaolites. So if you're a Roman Catholic fan, just keep the channel tuned to Bob Long Sports all weekend long. Lansdale Catholic gave the foul. And Sanaya Littlejohn goes to the line. I'm sorry, beg your pardon. Ava Renninger goes to the line on the foul by Littlejohn. Seems every week there's a, a matchup on the women's or, or the men's side. It's very exciting and that, that's the Philadelphia area for you. That is. There's no doubt about that. And we get to as many as we can. Too much basketball to go around, though. Back to a 15-point lead for Archbishop Wood, and there has been no let-up from the Vikings. Lansdale Catholic has not been able to open the door. Maybe it opens a crack there with that bucket by Sanaya Littlejohn, but as long as Archbishop Wood is not turning the ball over, 
and is hitting their free throws or getting easy buckets in transition, it's going to be a challenge. Sophia Topakis puts it in. Pacella, there's Windish on her. Double team now for Pacella. And that's just great defense. A really tough shot by Olivia Pacella. And sometimes you just take your cap off. That was incredible defense by Alexa Windish. And better offense prevailed by one of the best high school shooters that I have ever seen. That was some hard work too. You know, screens and handoffs and hard work from Olivia Bacello and then a finish at the three. So back to the line goes Ava Renninger. It's a very disciplined and veteran team, even though there are some young girls on this one, but get the ball in space. That helps you break the full court pressure and then get the ball into the hands of your best ball handler. And if not your best foul shooter, one of them. A tremendously proficient foul shooter, Ava Renninger. Very strong second half for Ava. Stay with us post game, folks, as we will get the player of the game on the Archbishop Wood side, and it might be the girl that just got that rebound. Emily Naus will shoot two at the line. We will have a post game interview with her. Our buddy Joe Donahue on camera will take you there. And then hopefully we can catch up with Mike McDonald as well. Thrilled to support the Philadelphia Catholic League where we can. The girls' game is as strong as it's ever been with the depth in the league. Newman Garetti is back this year. Archbishop Carroll, Cardinal O'Hara, Lansdale Catholic, they're here to stay. They're gonna drop this one here tonight, but don't close the book on this club quite yet. There's too much talent to do that. And even West Catholic, they've had wonderful years in the past and a solid team this season. Pacella is open for three. And a rebound corralled by guess who? Ava Renninger, she will shoot two from the line and with 47 seconds left, the Archbishop Wood faithful can feel it now. Just about 70 tickets that went to Archbishop Wood here tonight, Meg. It's a tight venue. Sue O'Neill, the wonderful AD at Archbishop Wood was very appreciative of B.J. Hogan, the AD here at Lansdale Catholic, and how seamless he made the process, how welcoming he was to Archbishop Wood, and make sure that their fans, particularly the parents, got into the game here tonight, knowing that this would be a sellout, and it was going to be a sellout pretty quickly. Sonia Littlejohn, there's an open three for Mobley, and now pulls it down. That might be it. Renninger across the timeline, Windish with a touch, and the Archbishop Wood Vikings, they're gonna keep that zero in the loss column in Philadelphia Catholic League play. They're through three of the four Giants in this league, and this has to feel good. Going to play Newman Garetti on Friday night. Emily Nouse was unbelievable, paced the way with 27 points in the first half. And the Vikings avenge a little bit of heartbreak from last year in the Palestra. They win the regular season matchup 70 to 52. Stay with me here as I head down to grab an interview with a member of the Archbishop Wood team.
We have Ava Renninger and Emily Naus with us here tonight. Congratulations on a heck of a win. Maybe it feels good to get Lansdale Catholic back after last year at the Palestra. What went well out there for you tonight, Ava? I think we moved the ball really well. Of course, uh, my girl over here hit a bunch of clutch shots in the first half, and then we were able to run our offense in the second half, move the ball, and we cut, and we played great defense. We scouted them really well, and we uh, held up our end on the defense end. Well, Emily, she led into it very well. You were on fire in the first half. Six triples, each one longer than the last. The rim must have looked pretty wide up there tonight. Yeah, I mean, these girls make it easy for me. They, you know, we pass the ball. Everyone's really unselfish, and we're always looking for each other. So they made it really easy on me. Ava, to you now, this rivalry, I mean, you're local with Lansdale Catholic. I'm sure you guys are looking for the same type of girls to go to school at each of the places. You know, I, I recognize this is a regular season game, but the meaning of this one as it pertains to you guys played in the state final two years ago. You played in the Catholic League final last year. You're going to continue to play big games going forward. What does that mean? I mean, I love it, honestly, having all our fans here. And this rivalry, I like the rivalry games. They mean more to us, especially after losing the PCL last year. We carried it with us into this game, trying to get one back. And hopefully we'll see them in the playoffs so we can get another one. Emily, the threes are, are wonderful. And people will be replaying those six threes for a long time. But having to defend against Grace McDonough down low is a challenge with her size. How did you do it so well? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely challenging. Um, I've never really been the big on the team. Um, but, you know, Coach Mike and, you know, my mom, she was a big, and they kind of helped me with some techniques and just, you know, stay, stay ahead of the ball, jump to the ball. Um, Coach Mike's been getting on me about that. Uh, That's my big mama. Yeah, so I, I think it finally clicked tonight. Well, congratulations on the win, both of you. Thanks for spending some time with us. I know it doesn't get easier with Newman Garetti coming up on Friday, but congrats on, on keeping that oval in the loss column. Thank you. Thank you so much. Emily Naus and Ava Ranger, thanks again, guys, and we'll snag, snag your head coach for just a moment. Mike, thanks for coming out of the locker room to see us here. I know it's craziness. That's okay. That's okay. Congrats on a big win. What went well out there? Our defensive game plan really worked. We wanted to take the shooters out of the game for you know 90% of the game. We did that. Uh, we knew McDonald was going to be a challenge, so we we took our chances, kind of doubling down off of uh, Esposito, and then when they subbed in Mobley, uh, we were willing to kind of live with their shots, um, and it worked out. Uh, and then you know, unfortunately, they left them now so open way too much, you know, in their zone in the first half, and she made them pay. So credit to her. Credit to Ava down the stretch, made a lot of big plays in the second half, getting to the basket and knocking down free throws. And a credit to Alexa Windish big time for running those shooters, chasing all over the place. She was a big time part of what we just did today. Without her, uh, it would be a different game because Olivia Vichel is deadly from the three-point line. Yeah, she absolutely is. And, and that was what I was going to bring up, what Windish did defensively. Greer gave you great minutes here tonight. In terms of you only go six deep, but though you got to feel really good about those six. Yeah, today we went we went seven. If you count Reagan Papierski getting in there for a minute, uh, eight. But um, yeah, today it just felt like the right move to go. We weren't in foul trouble. Obviously, we, we only have so much size to battle McDonough, so M's going to have to stay in there. And we don't like taking Ava, our point guard, off the court um, because she just runs the show. She's just heady, gets gets everybody else involved. So it um, felt like the right thing to do. We were playing so well in the first half, and um, we continued that in the third quarter. So it just felt right to just keep them out there and let them ride it out. Um, they deserved that moment. They deserved the time out there, especially after last season. So I was happy for, for my seniors and, and Big Mama Junior M. Ness. Well, I have to imagine. I don't know the full numbers, but you said that you had five girls that are shooting over 40% from three. And I... It might be six now. I don't know. She's probably up there now. Yeah, she's probably back. And again, I talked to you on the phone. It's a little bit her volume and, and how she's being run off the three-point line, but we wanted her to keep shooting. Uh, she was about at 30 when I checked after I talked to you. So she's probably close to 40 again. Uh, again, by all means, leave her open if you don't want to, <laughs> if you want to. Uh, but yeah, we got five other kids who are shooting over 40%. So, um, you know, we like zones. We like to get an open from behind the arc. Our kids enjoy that. So it was good tonight. One more for you, the atmosphere. This, we knew this game would be sold out. It would be sold out early. You guys got your 70 or so folks in here, and it looks like some students got here early enough to make sure they were supporting the girls, so maybe more like 100, 110. Yeah. 
What, what does a night like tonight mean for your program, for the Philadelphia Catholic League, for girls basketball in Philadelphia? It's a good regular season win, um, but we have Newman Garetti on Friday. So we, but the environment here is always cool. It's, it's a small gym, not a lot of seats, so they pack it in. Their student section does a great job of be, being both funny and, and loud. Uh, it's hard to shoot in that corner in the first half when you're, when you're over there. So that, that's, that's a challenge. So they bring that uh, advantage for them. Um, but for us, it's a regular season win. We want to get one more against Newman Garetti and put ourselves in a good spot going into playoffs. So. Uh, that's that's what we're focused on just just getting this next win on Friday well thank you for doing this congratulations on a great win thanks for having us out here and you and Eric being so uh, giving with your time to make sure we we did right by you guys and we will see you not too far down the road hopefully thanks very much Bob I appreciate you guys covering the game I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed it too we sure did we can't wait for the next one Mike McDonald with us thanks very much thanks for being here he says, hi, Mom, on his way out. Love that. So that's it for us here tonight. Bob Long here from the floor. Meg McCullough, excellent job on her color commentary debut. Joe Donahue, he is our expert cameraman. And that's us, Bob Long Sports. Hope you enjoyed the telecast here tonight. And we'll catch you for another one real soon. Our next broadcast, LaSalle at Roman Catholic on Friday at 345. And then on Sunday at 2.30, Roman Catholic at Newman Gretti on the boys' side as well. Thanks again, everyone, and good night.